Wake Up Guyana on the radio with a different. Joining us on Wake Up Guyana, as usual, is your host, senior journalist of Character News, Leonard Gildari. Leonard, a pleasant good afternoon to you and over to you on this beautiful Friday afternoon. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Zia. You hear me loud and clear? Loud and clear. Very good. A good day to all on this wonderful day. It's the end of the week. And uh, what I'm saying to you, it's not the end of life. It's the end of the week. So before we say anything, I've, I've got a very beautiful something I want to share with you today. I was reading and I want to, before we say anything else, I'm going to have to share it with you guys. And it says here, the greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. I repeat, and I want to share back with you. It's such a beautiful thing. It's inspirational in every sense of the words that come out, come out of here. The greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. So it doesn't matter. I think it's good that we fall every time that we realize uh, we learn to appreciate those bruised knees and elbows. And so that when we rise again, it is going to be so very beautiful because then you enjoy uh, whatever it is. You're having a deep appreciation of the struggles, the sacrifices that we would have gone through. It is a place on our knees that we would never, ever want to go again. So I want to start there by saying a good day to our beautiful people right across this land of ours. It is the Wake Up Guyana Show. I'm your host, Leonard Gildari. I'm operating from home. It has been that way for almost two weeks now. That's because I've tested positive for COVID-19. And I want to say that it has been uh, very good to see the support that has been coming out from our people. We have not stopped coming to you with our Wake Up Guyana show from Kaicho Radio. That is because we never, ever give up here. We don't say no. We don't say never. We don't understand those words. Those words are not in our program. So we might be down and out in a little but our people are going to come to you, bring you the news. And we have a team of good people, strong people, young people, energetic people there at Kaicho Radio, Kaicho News. I want to say good day to Mr. Glenn Lal. And a good day to the guys down in our studio there. Of course, Joshua Van Seitman and Kevin Smith and the rest of the folks there. And so we get uh, into things today as normal. Uh, what is it that you have to bring to us on the Wake Up Guyana show? We want to hear from you. And of course, before... Uh, we get down to those things where we're going to have our conversation as normal. We want to tell you what are some of the big news that is coming out today. And we are, of course, going to share with you news from your favorite newspaper. That is the Kaichur newspaper. And uh, 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 among other things, uh, the lead headlines that is coming out there. Uh, so uh, this morning, I, I must tell you, uh, there is good news. Uh, the, 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 there's traffic flowing up and down the West Mobis area there. Um, uh, there's, of course, President Irfanali would have joined to the West Mobis area. He would have met relatives of the slain, Mobis to two teens, Isaiah, as well as Joel, and then met with the relatives, of course, of Mr. Pretty Paul Hargobin. And uh, there he would have um, uh, made it very clear in meeting with those relatives that he's going to pull out all stops. He's not going to stop until he get answers and the people of Ghana get answers for the, for these acts. While that is happening, there is in, uh, news coming out, unconfirmed news that is, that the relatives would have said to uh, President Finale that uh, from what we hear in these killings here may have been gang related. If that is indeed the case, then what we would have seen here the protests and everything would have been strongly, I, I, I want to say, or wrongly, wrongfully um, uh, directed. And what you would have seen here, a couple of people, very clearly, criminals would have taken control of what should have been very peaceful pickets and protesting. And they would have taken it. And of course, we would have said that starting yesterday. We need to get to the bottom of these things and get to the intellectual authors. A lot of people were hurt. Properties uh, damaged two persons more lost their life on top of that. One young man in, in, in the, in, in, with his long life ahead of him lost his life. Those two young men should have never lost their life. Was it drugs? Was it um, gang related? Was it a retaliation for two, a couple of coconuts being stolen? 
we must know, we must get to the, the, the bottom of it. The authorities are busy investigating. The president, uh, the government, has already says that it's going to ask uh, the government of uh, the United Kingdom of Britain to um, give us some help forensically and otherwise to find the answers to bring the perpetrators to justice. And so that is good news. Uh, the president is also saying he's not, um, he's not uh, uh, above going to the United Nations to ask for some help to see about an inquiry um, to bring some closure to, for us to get some answers as to what went wrong, where the politics played a role in this entire thing, and to bring the persons who would probably have been the intellectual authors, and that's my word that I'm saying there, um, to the fore. We want to see justice because of our country was hurting. It is the end of the week almost. We come into another weekend. Uh, we will be positive as we go forward into this weekend that we shall, we shall rise above everything that would have happened. So welcome to this wonderful day. Welcome to the Wake Up Guyana Show. Welcome to uh, Kaicho Radio. And I want to say good day to you for wherever you're joining us from across this nation of ours. And of course, uh, from overseas. And like I said, uh, all every single day we have been with you. Whether you're coming for, to us from uh, the, the United States of America, from Canada, from Europe, across the Caribbean, from our neighboring countries, of Suriname, from Brazil, from Trinidad and Tobago, across this Caribbean nation, wherever you're joining us from, a good day to you. And of course, I can't forget our dear people who have been with us day in, day out, and they've struggled with us here. I feel the pain. They would have seen their families be at work. I want to say, and this goes both sides of the divide, I want to say good day to you. Um, this morning, I must also tell you that Claremont Mingo Region 4 uh, or District 4 returning officer of the Ghana Elections Commission, who would have been accused of uh, playing a very major role in uh, helping to thwart uh, the democratic rights of the people of Ghana. He appeared in court and would have been slapped with another charge, an indictable charge of conspiracy to commit fraud. And he is jointly charged with uh, uh, the uh, chairperson of the People's National Congress Reform and former Minister of Public Health. Uh, uh, this is uh, no other than uh, Walter Lawrence, and she would have been in court also. So they have to return in court on November the 16th. And uh, so that is what uh, we have to tell you with regards to that. So another child slapped on Mingo, and uh, he would have been appearing in court with David Walter Lawrence. And uh, of course, among all of this would have been the there's a developing news of uh, deep interest to you people today. And then the news is um, that there is a, a, a deep division within the People's National Congress reform. And uh, on one side, Walla Lawrence and, and James Wan and the, the rest of them are pushing for change. Uh, she would have played a major role in the Burmese area, calling for peace and for a withdrawal of the protests. Um, and that was done. They listened to her. She would have gone up to Burmese the last couple of days there, and she would have been there with uh, several government ministers. Uh, so it seems as if the people are listening to authority. But uh, the story that is emerging here is the role that Paula Lawrence as chairperson who would not have even been in, I think, in the National Assembly there. I'm, I'm not sure that she's involved there. Uh, she's coming out there as a leader, vying to uh, take charge of her party. Um, and uh, she wants to see peace. And she was not unwilling to rock the boat and say, this is a direction that we want to see. So that is a very big story. And of course, with all the hullabos that was happening, we will have seen Trinidad. Uh, taken away, walking away, um, uh, the night Riders, uh, they would have been, um, the TKR, they would have been walking away there with the, uh, just, uh, the, another crumb, another trophy there that they had badly won. And of course, the Amazon Warriors did not lose, it's just that they did not, they did not reach they did not reach the, the, the final. So all of that, it was overtaken. We lick in our wounds and we're still hoping that one day, one of the, these days that we're going to show the resilience at the corners to reach the final and take our rightful place as a champ. I do believe that our champions 
are they right there? It's just that luck has been running against us. We need to change a couple of things. Maybe get rid of the managers. I'm not sure. But well, whatever it is, whatever we've been doing, you cannot do the same thing every single year, every single day, every single hour, uh, the same way and expect a different results. you got to change things somewhat. So if you've been doing things and you expect that uh, your boss is going to give you a promotion and you're going to work every day late or you want to leave early on time and you don't want to give an extra, pushing those extra hours, you're not going to get that promotion because you're doing things the same way. So let us wild things up here a little. President Air Fanadi meets with relatives of slain West Wobis teams and pretty well Hargobin. As Excellency uh, President Air Finale, and this is a statement coming out from uh, the office of the President uh, from the government uh, this morning. Um, President Air Finale today met with the families of West Coast Burbis slain teens, Isaiah Joel, Henry, and Harry Singer, the home, so personally expressed his condolences and to assure them of government support and bringing the perpetrators to justice. They have said to assure that the the relative that assure the relatives that no stone will be left unturned to uh, ensure that those responsible for the heinous acts are brought to justice and made to answer for the crimes on behalf of the people of Guyana and my behalf and that of my family and government. I want to again express my condolences to you, Ali said uh, to the family. During his visit to each of the family, the president also pledged to work tirelessly to ensure that the resolution. Uh, a resolution of the uh, uh, investigation is given uh, the highest priority. I will work night and day to get to the bottom of things, uh, to, to what happened to those teens, President Ali Vaud. He also used the opportunity to urge residents and community members present to work with the members of the police force and the Ghana police force who are stationed to restore peace and stability, safety and security in all the communities remain a top priority. As you can see, there's more visibility on the ground, more resources on the ground, uh, Ali says to uh, the residents. He also urged the communities to come together and not allow themselves to be divided. He also asked the residents to cooperate with the police who are working to not only conduct their investigations, so also bring peace to the communities along with the uh, uh, along the West Coast movies corridor. This is stressed, can achieve true cooperation and sharing of critical information who can assist investigation. The head of the head of state also reiterated that no forms of criminality will be tolerated. We cannot tolerate lawlessness and uh, criminality. We have to fix what went wrong and, and, and move forward, he says. So very good news. I like those kind of language. And so we are gonna um, bring you the headlines of the Kaichur newspaper today. It is September 11th. You remember many years ago, more than a decade and a half ago, um, almost two decades ago, uh, we would have seen um, uh, that uh, very uh, big attack in the United States, one in the Pentagon and two in the, the Twin Tower, as well as um, some other uh, attacks with the planes. And it would have brought to the knees um, uh, America which would have caused America to put into a number of um, top measures, including the way travel is being done across the world. It changed the world forever. Um, going down 20 years forward, uh, there is another um, uh, big issue that has changed the world. It is going to change the world forever and the way we do things um, and the way we take precautions and everything, and that's none other than the pandemic, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, the coronavirus, as we would call it. And it has uh, brought its knees the entire world. And it has crippled trade. It has um, killed many thousands of persons. And so we have to ensure that as we go forward as a people, that we have to live with COVID-19. Uh, you look at stories coming out of the uh, United Kingdom this morning, um, uh, there's a big quarrel going on. People would have been working from home and the uh, government is not too happy with uh, the amount of work that they, but they, they're doing. Um, people are you know, becoming accustomed. So uh, going forward, there's going to be an entire middle management. Um, uh, it is predicted that there's no longer going to be there. So you're going to have, what you're going to have, you're going to have people that is um, going to be working you're probably not going to have any supervisors that's going to be there anymore. Uh, so uh, let us see, uh, you know, going forward, how it is that uh, we could um, get accustomed to COVID-19 
because it's here to stay. It's not something that we like, but we have to get over it and find means to deal with it. A big chunk of the budget has gone to COVID-19. We have over 50 something billion dollars. And guess what? A big chunk of that is going to COVID-19 monies that could have gone elsewhere. We want those money to go elsewhere, to the pensions, to school for kids, for more resources, so many other things that we could do to repair our roads. These bank road is in a mess. Lots of potholes there. And I, I want to say thank you very much, too, because uh, what I can tell you today is that there is a lot of our government officials listening to this program right now. People are tuned in. Uh, yesterday, we would have gotten calls from the uh, Guyana um, uh, Power and Light as well as the Ministry of um, Housing and Water with regards to uh, people complaining there what would have happened. So I want to say a good day to those wonderful folks there in those very uh, big ministry. I want to see, say a safe day to our president and his cabinet, of course, to the opposition leader, uh, Mr. Joseph Harmon, former president uh, David Granger. Uh, we don't hold any um, uh, thing with anybody. We're going to say it as it is. These are all our leaders. Uh, they represent somebody. We want to see them do their job. We want to see them deliver value for money. We pay you guys, whether it's a stipend, whatever you want to call it, at the end of the day, you have to make sure that you deliver your services to the people. For the opposition, the opposition leaders representative according to the recount, and those figures that came out of March 2nd, it's 217,000 persons. Let's don't forget those numbers. For the, for the People's Progressive Party Civic, it's over 233,000 persons. So those are big, big numbers. And so if you want to put it and say that these people don't count, they do count, they represent something. When the PPPB was in opposition, they represent somebody. So let us be very... Um, uh, let us be very um, understanding of uh, what those figures mean. So we go straight into the Kite Show newspaper today. When we come back, we want to open those lines because uh, it is not about me talking today. It's about you having your views and calling and let us have those discussions. Should um, we hold an inquiry? What would you like to see? Should they be jailed? Uh, what about those folks who would be caught um, or identified as playing a role as beating our people? Um, attacking, damaging, lighting fire. What about those? What is it that you want to see? How should government treat uh, future incidents like this? God forbids that something like that happens. So let us see what is happening. It's a very busy front page here in Kaichor uh, News today. It's September 11th, a very significant day in the history of the world. Uh, the attacks would have been on America so many two decades ago. And I was uh, living in the islands then. Uh, this is a sidetrack a little. I was living in St. Martin then, and I was busy working in the morning, and uh, the television was on. And um, CNN, I was tuned in on CNN and looking at something, I can't remember what it was. And then, so, you know, there's a breaking news. Somebody just reported that a plane just ran or flew into one of the towers in New York there. And then within moments, uh, there was some shock because uh, the cameras were on the tower and there was something that looked like another plane ramming into that building. And then there was some other news. America um, was shocked because what was happening here? Another news, a plane uh, flew into the Pentagon. And uh, within hours, you would have seen the donging of those twin towers. Um, many people died, including lots of Guyanese people. I think it's over 2,000 persons. America was never the same again. The world was never the same again. Guyana could not just travel to the United States. They were strict. When you're going through and you're taking stuff through the airport, so many changes, so many things that we had to implement at our airports here before you could even say, and there were a lot of screening and so on. The, the, the embassies got a little stricter. So that is why it is significant in terms of uh, September 11. The name Bin Laden, uh, many people believe that he was a hero. Um, many persons uh, was breathe a sigh of relief when under the presidency of uh, Barack Obama that they were able to capture him um, and uh, uh, his body, of course. Um, I'm not sure. I think they, they, they dumped him or it, it was um, uh, the, 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 uh, the authorities would have gotten through it a bit. So it's September 11th here now. And traffic flow in this joint services take control of Region 5. I like these headlines here. And because it means that uh, these people, it wasn't too late in coming. I want to hear some of your thoughts of that. 
that the joint services, that the security force take this, uh, take control too long, that they lapse because if you're going to do an inquiry into the entire issue that would have happened, the situation that evolves on Sunday evening, uh, you would have to take a role that the joint services do enough. Um, what could we, what could they have done better going forward? Is there a need for more training? Is there a need for more officers on the ground? So we need answers to this um, as we go forward. TNT constantly improved gas gas deals while Guyana hides behind contract sanctity. And this is a story that every single day that we keep talking about here. I mean, I don't understand. Are we a fool or something? How is it that other places are saying that they could use these oil and gas deals that they have, these oil and gas deals, the arrangements that they have, and they're able to strike, strike better deal. And we were talking here about contract sanctity. Are we crazy or something? Is it that we not listen to what people? Are we not seeing these stories, these good practices, these beautiful stories that's coming out from the rest of the world? How people, how governments are going ahead and strike a better deal, collecting more millions of dollars for its people. And we say it in here, well, we can't break the deal because it's sanctified. It's a, it's a sign of blood. And so if you go do it, it's going to spell, uh, it's going to have repercussions, ripple effects on future contracts that we're going to have and those the sanctity of those deals. And turn that into biggest saying, look, we would have taken and we, in the, the renewal time when we renew these deals, we were able to sit with these people, these gas companies here and say, look, before we give you this extension, we want uh, to have a better deal and, you know, you give us some more money here and there. And they were able to do it. And so here was a lesson. It's a big story uh, because while everything else is important, this is a story that's going to be dominating us in the years to come because we would be watching our government very carefully. We'd be telling the oil companies that we're coming in front of you with our placards and we're going to be waving our placards. We're going to embarrass you. If you don't start smelling the coffee, that we're not going to sit by and we're going to allow you to believe that you could walk all over us, ride all over us, pee on us or whatever you want to say. It. And these are languages that we should be, these are languages that we should be talking to our government, to the authorities, to the regulators, to the oil companies, and to every company that comes here and believe that we are an easy people, that we don't know how to fight, that we don't understand our role, our own rights. Well, we do understand it. And there are people who are willing to fight. And there's a government there who is stating, look, look, wait a minute. Um, this is not what we want. And so we have a people, we have parliament now, and the, the, the pressure is going to be on. Two charges and death of East Bobby's Carpenter that sparked protests. You can remember this story here uh, with, a, uh, with a fight between four, four, um, four young men. And uh, the fight ended up with one man dying and the other man with a slash across his face. Two men were charged after there was also a protest. And this is in the East Bobby's area there. Um, and that's a separate from what would have happened in West Bobby's in the Maikoni um, area there and so on. Man stripped car burnt in protest attack at Maikoni. And this is a story they were taking he and a afro guyanese an Indian man and an afro guyanese I could say it. Um, they were headed to Barbies. And while on the way to Barbies there, um, they were taking some gifts for some less fortunate people. The car was attacked and uh, uh, they were robbed. And uh, he had to run for his life with, this, uh, with this, the other person that was with him. And um, they lit his car of fire. They wanted to attack him. They, they beat him really badly. Four arrested for beating death of man at bad settlement. And this is a story that's developing that we're paying attention to. I think it's a pretty ball, um, Har Hargo being there. And he would have um, allegedly reportedly come out of the sky and fired shots. Nobody knew where he got the gun from. His sister and his family was unaware that he had a gun. And they had to run for their life too. Um, um, he was beaten left on the road. So four persons attacked for that. Supernam a woman killed by ex-lover after late night phone call. Um, you know, the murders, the senseless loss of life. This is not something that we want. Second set of robbers help a victim recover a stolen passport from protesters. This is a feel-good story here. If there's anything that made me smile, that says this morning that we have good people here. 
and um, the stories uh, uh, that, that that came out because uh, you know you can go there. Our reporters are not allowed to go there. We want to protect them. Um, so this man is driving, and um, they're coming along. I think to go to the embassy, and they were attacked, and they were told to go through the back street, and they were circled, and they were robbed, and they were allowed to go after that. And they told some other people who were about to rob them um, that look, we lost our passport. Don't rob us anymore. And the people jumped in the car. Two of them took them back to the back street area there. And they were able to recover the passport. The people them uh, could have left and they were taken to Georgetown or they, they were able to leave. So this is a feel-good story, one of the good stories that, you know, they're decent. And I've always said that they're decent people in our country. And while they believe that they know the rights and everything, they could protest. And so they're not going to stand by. So they have pockets of people as well. And they, they, the questions that, 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 that uh, are begging to be answered right now, the persons interject themselves in the group there and turn what should have been peaceful uh, picketing, peaceful protests into something else, or is it that the protesters themselves did this? We need answers to all uh, all those questions that are being asked. Um, Bruce Mord of Barbie Steens, four persons released from police custody. Number of persons continue to remain in custody. We are going to follow this, this story here. And this has to do with the two teams from West Louis here. Um, I think they, there is an extension. These people have been held uh, beyond the time, uh, the 72 hours. And so we want to hear uh, how the story evolves. We heading into another um, um, uh, weekend again. And so are they going to be held until next week? Are the police get to the bottom of it? Uh, let us see how this goes. But uh, Barbie's West will be such back, you know, it is a back to a peaceful time. So but businessman arrested in uh, re relation to leak a Roger Khan sex video. Um, interesting story. ERC trash for adequate response, inadequate response uh, to racial tensions over recent uh, Barbie's killings. And this is a story too um, that we should be paying attention to. We give millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars to regulators to do their job. And when they do, they don't do their job, you have issues with that. The ERC is uh, the, the body that's tasked with making sure that uh, people are not um, going about making racial slurs and if they do it on television or in a public forum, you could be charged, you could be sanctioned. And uh, the ERC is being criticized here. All the members who are taken from various parts of society, including from the churches and so on and so forth, uh, from the re religious bodies. And uh, they have been accused of not doing anything or not doing enough to maybe a uh, statements coming out um, very to criticize what was going on in Barbie's there. So um, uh, this is going to be a topic that's going to be debated in the coming weeks um, as to the roles of the authorities, uh, like ERC, the police, the army, the joint services, um, what happened to the region, what happened to the police who went on the scene very early. So these are um, uh, very good stories that are coming up here. Um, uh, in terms of uh, raising the bar when it comes to uh, having uh, the discussions and so on. So I want to say good day to our people right down in Barbies, to the West Coast Barbies. Have a very pleasant day. I want you guys to stay safe. Make sure that you wear your mask. To the Maikoni people, how are you guys doing? Please, let's, for the sake of this country, not have a repeat what we've seen over the last couple of days. Um, uh, so it is not something that our country could go on. We lost uh, too many lives. Two persons and another two persons and so many persons traumatized over uh, the, the last couple of days. So many um, millions of dollars. Do you know what the pong of um, salary this morning? And you guys, if you are on the feed this morning, I want to hear. Um, I understand a, um, a pong for salary. If it's a pong I was sold, somebody called me and told me $1,500, between $1,000 and $1,500. And let me tell you the story behind that. When we would have blocked those roads, we had... Uh, ground provisions and we had the uh, fresh produce that's coming from Barbies. Guess what? They, they, they were not able to come, so there's no supplies or very little supplies in the markets. And because a lot of the um, produce that's coming down goes to Stabro, goes to um, Kitty Market, goes to the rest of the markets, goes to um, Stabro Market. And so we have a shortage of those things. So the price of, of everything is almost very, very, very high at the moment. It's almost like more than five, six hundred percent have gone up. 
And that is one of the ripple effects uh, that you would have seen because of these protests. We would have seen rice being held back. People could not have been able to work the taxis and the high cars and everything else. Supplies could not have gone to Burbies. Burbies could not have sent supplies on to Georgetown. And when you would have seen uh, the authorities having to spend money, send the uh, joint services that way, send them with vehicles, send the fire trucks to that area there. It costs money. They have to provide food. They have to provide fuel. There's wear and tear and everything. And so there's a whole lot of cost, lost opportunity that, 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 that that's got all going to come out from here. And when all this has happened, you know, uh, we cannot, uh, you know, we got to put it out there and let people understand very, very clearly that there's uh, there's repercussions, there's implications whenever we 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 do our stuff. And here's Freddie Kisuna of Walla Lawrence has shown phenomenal courage and leadership. And this is good. Uh, we have a recognition of our leaders who have decided to cross uh, the, the the ethnic divide, and they're saying that look, wait a minute, so what is happening up here is not something that me as a person would tolerate, and we're not going to tolerate that. And so um, it is good that we see. Our leaders are willing to throw it aside. We've been calling for this for a very long time. We pray and we hope that our leaders will do the right thing. And and, um, and when they have decided to not do that, um, then we have issues. Uh, meanwhile, there are more deaths being recorded with COVID-19. There's a very young man, a standard role model to so, so many. Um, I think it is Low, Mr. Low. He would have died, very young man, uh, just before his 20s or so. And uh, so this COVID-19 is not uh, does not have respect for whether you're old or you're young. If they catch you and you have underlying conditions, um, you are going to be hit and hit hard. I feel really, really dry. Last night, I didn't sleep the entire night. So I'm here. If you hear Gilary uh, decide to cut the show, it's because I have little, really little energy. I need to get some rest, you know. Um, uh, we've been doing it so... Thank you very much for you guys for being there uh, with us all the time. Uh, you've been foot to foot with us. Um, CGIA to acquire sanitization towers within a couple of weeks. So if you're going through the CGIA, you'd have to walk through under what that can like area and you're going to be sanitized. So it's no longer the airport employees who's going to be doing it. They are going to be the ones doing, uh, be doing it. And of course, if you miss your newspaper today, uh, the last couple of days, the Kaitra News has a special supplement for Burbies if you would have missed it. And so all the news is going to be in there. Um, and so it tells you, so, so you can read it there. So let's cut the chase right now. Let's get them. I, I've spoken of bring you the news. Those are the major news. As we get uh, some more too, we are going to bring you those breaking news. Uh, so it is 6 triple two triple two, And we want you to send those messages. Let's hear your messages. We want to hear your thoughts. Uh, should there be an inquiry into the more recent incidents? If they find people are culpable, and we see like those videos, that man coughing that other man so very brutally, um, that that minibus driver, you would have seen the video not too far away from the policemen standing there. Did the police see? Did they try to act? What happened there? Um, uh, th there was this uh, uh, killing of the two boys. Was it linked to, to something else? Was it two coconuts? Was it um, drugs? Was it a gang-related something? We don't know at the moment the police have to do something. But we have to find, at the end of the day, we have to find answers for it. So let us get up right. So it's a Wake Up Guyana show coming to you live from the Kaicho Radio Studios down in Saffron Street, 24 Saffron Street to be exact, and 99.1 and 99.5 in Burbies, 99.1. You can get us an escribble as well, and 99.5 in Burbies. And, of course, Kaicho Radio on Facebook. And of course, uh, you could get us on uh, Kite Show Radio live stream on YouTube. So, Joshua, when we get those calls coming in, 226 please put them through. Please put them through. Let us get our people online here. We want to hear from them. We want to hear uh, what is happening. We want to hear their thoughts. We want to hear so many other things. I've been trying to get the, the um, uh, NIS folks back on for today. I haven't been able to make contact. I, I know that they're very, very yeah, busy. Right so, Hello. yes. So, good afternoon, Carly. You're the air. Go right ahead, sir. Our good man. afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Something, something really doesn't mess up, maybe. I don't know if it's my fault to analyzing or what. But those two guys that were charged, 
for that guy that you stabbed that guy. And, and when I see the video, the two guys with the bicycle I'm speaking about, 31 get mouth get slashed. Me say no blood or nothing. Even if the by mouth get slashed here at the sea, you ain't see nobody hand holding nothing. You ain't see no blood. Something that's amazed with me with, with these things. Two guys get charged. Yes, if they do the crime, they, they think they got to spend the time. But we are not seeing anything to stab or to, to say anything. They said the guy gets stabbed. The next thing is this. Um, I agree 100% with Valda Lawrence. Yes, she do something. But I don't like when she close up. We can tell, I can tell we people, and if an Ali must tell he people, that should not come in. We are Guyanese. There is no, you have no AFC or PPP, you no, no own nobody. So you just say we Guyanese that are try to unite in a better way. That 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 is my um concern. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Zaire. And I, and I fully agree with you. Um, You know, um, l l l let me say this. This is not my people and your people yes you have your supporters and so i think maybe he, she's talking politically but uh, you know when we start talking those kind of talks so it's sinking the people's brains I, I i i have to say to you let me say i gotta start talking what this being our country you this is our people this is not a pnc people or this is not a pvp set of people it has to be one people that's what our motto says one people one nation one destiny let us don't forget that one people, one nation, one destiny. So when we have stories like that, uh, you know, um, I, I quite right. I, I think in hindsight, uh, Walla Lawrence is going to say, yes, maybe um, it was, um, I, I should have said the other thing, which is, you know, it is our people here. So let us um, continue. Let us continue to have those conversations. Let us continue to talk the right things. Um, um, and when we see our leaders say that we, we have the right to correct them too. Uh, it, both sides of the divide, and 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 I kind of like, I kind of like the posture. If it if it was a smartness um, uh, to use a word I borrowed from one of my friends, uh, if it was a smartness that Walla Lawrence did um, to pull back and to stop this uh, protest down in Barbizier, along with the People's Progressive Party civic um, ministers that went down there, I saw Vindia um, Passat. Um, um, Minister Vindia Prasad, Ministry, uh, Minister of Human Services, and uh, of course you would have had the Prime Minister so going down there. I'm glad that the President went down there today. They must take these uh, matters very seriously when it comes to anything to do with ethnic tensions, when it comes to do with anything. Um, uh, it started off like that, but then it became a criminal issue. So at some point or the other, it became does not um, uh, uh, does not an issue of people protesting, but it is that the people it became criminal. But also they were targeting um, actually people were targeting the Indian um, uh, person. People there's lots of person would have been coming out and say that um, I'm not going to bury this and not saying it didn't happen, but I'm saying to you also that the, the criminals were there and they were the ones who wrecked it. And so they probably use that as a cover to rob the people. Whatever it is, at the end of the day, we need to fix it and fix it and not have a repeat of this. This is absolute madness. We cannot cut up two regions or cut up one region from the rest of the country. We cannot stop trade. We cannot stop business. This would have, have a, a big impact on farmers down in Burbis. It would have a big impact, uh, trauma on lots of families families who would have gone. I heard some I heard some stories that is coming out. The sugar workers went uh, from Enmore to Blairmont and they were left stuck there, were had to be put placed in um, the estates there, in the estate houses there, um, uh, made to sleep there away from their family. So there's a lot of side stories that you would hear maybe come out after a little while that hasn't come out, that would tell you some of the trauma that we would have, uh, you know, people, family were wondering where is their family. They had people who had no phone, couldn't get in contact, and it just happened. One man who was missing from his family, a young, a, a young, a young man, um, he could not get hold of his family down in Burbis, and they put it out on the social media. If you've seen this guy, fortunately, he was in a crowd and somebody recognized him and says, "Hey, somebody wants to get hold of you," and that's how he was able to make uh, contact with his family. When you see pastors being beaten. When you see pastors being beaten, um, uh, that is something. And I, I saw there's a big story this morning. 
about a teacher that is on the, I think the, the, the West Coast, I think it's on one of the protests on either the East or East side, they, that she was even attacked. I think it was a headmistress, attacked by one of our own students, attacked and he, the story that's coming out that he even tried to kiss her on, a, on, on, our, um, on our lips and he did that. And when he tried again, she pushed him and, and then she was, um, uh, she, she was beaten. And so there was some other young persons that was there with her. So there's so many stories that's coming out here that our country is, this is not something, this is not our people, this is not our people in Guyana here. So we don't want to play, we don't want this to come back, you know, um, and, 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 and our people to be faced with things like this. We should be very, very much ashamed. And as we move forward with this country, we want answers. So we are going to come back uh, to, to our numbers. Six triple two triple two. send all texts that you want to that number there. You can WhatsApp or you can send it normal text SMS. We want to hear some of the concerns, anything that you want to talk about, because this is a wake up Guyana show. And we want to wake up the people to what is happening in our country. We want to bring some resolutions, oh, some okay. answers to some of these problems that we're facing. And so when we bring it to the fore, we're not afraid to talk about it, whether it's police abuse, whether it is um, you believe there's a breach of law somewhere, whether you believe that your government is screwing up, whether you believe that the opposition is screwing up. We want to know that. We want to hear you. And because this is your show, it is the Wake Up Guyana show. Really so let's get right back to those lines and hear our boys. Do we have another call today, boys? Yes, sir. You have a caller here. Yes, go right ahead. Caller, good afternoon. You are near. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. This kind of a program, we in need of this kind of program, buddy. This whole well, thing, the message it's not my goes. program, it's your program. So go right ahead. Message man. Goes. Now, I'm calling from New Amsterdam. Yes, sir. The nurses in need of help badly. When this COVID started, the nurses were being presented with a, a, a bus to um, transport them. You, 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 do you know Bobby's good? The, the, the yeah, last, I'm familiar with Bobby's. The last Passenger goes up to sisters and a little further, just up on the, on the, on the east bank of Bobby's. Now, the transportation for those nurses been taken away for some reason or the other. My brother, is hell no hell with these nurses and, and car people. It's very rough for, for those people. Last night, the police, I'm not saying the police are not doing the work, See a nurse coming out of a certain street. Hi, nurse. See, the nurse, the nurse, the, the sorry in her uniform and her bag and so on, it's a score few. Where are you going? The nurse said, well, I'm going to look, look for nature. A next car loaded with nurses. The police stop the car. Tell the driver, let's go to the station. The nurse said, man, we're going to work. The police said, look. Let's go to the station because it's curfew. My brother, how can this thing happen? We all know the police didn't work, but they got to do the work with some kind of intelligence. No, 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 Bahola, and uh, there is, um, according to my knowledge, and I'm very, very clear with this. Um, when they put out the regulations, the COVID-19 regulations, it was made very clear that uh, uh, nurses, uh, frontline workers, they're all essential workers even journalists are essential work in fact we weren't even part of that thing so the police need to get their act together do you know which police station this is if you answer that much you think probably you answer that? A lot That's of central? come from different areas different areas but they had a, a patrol right they can't they can't hold this woman up because if, if this nurse here this nurse here that, that that went to her job or is going or coming from a job she is an essential worker, so they cannot hold her and say, what are you doing on the road? They've got to be a special kind of stupid or something. Well, I, uh, Because they know very well what, is, what, 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 are, the, what are the essential workers. And another system, with, this, with the hospital, when the nurses come off their night shift, 9 o'clock, they have a, a, a vehicle takes the nurses who live in New Amsterdam till to the guest house at Kanji to drop off another nurse or two at that um, center they have there. There's about six miles return trip. That, that that place is too far to have those people. When you come off night shift, you gotta go home. I uh -huh. I I'd like to suggest that somebody do something very better from the hospital. Take the people home to stand it away wherever. Don't care until in Kanji. You it's know, like, you, you remind me of a beautiful story there. When the, the whole COVID thing had started, there was a lady 
a, a business woman across the river, a young girl too. And she used to bully her friends for Boston. She took the Boston, she was taking the, 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 the nurses back and forth from work whenever they knock up in front of the, the, the yard. And I thought that was so lovely. But, and that goes to show you how important many people think that nurse is the job that nurses do and those frontline workers. I fully hear you what you're saying there. I'm gonna raise this issue and I'm gonna have to probably read again what are some of the essential workers that the government would have been talking about. Yes, sir, but I'd be very good because they're meeting a hard time. And another thing, when you try to telephone the hospital, the supervisor line is out of order for a very long time. Very long, you can't communicate with the hospital there. Only and this is New Amsterdam Hospital you're talking about, time, sir? All the time, that's right. So, all right, I'm going to raise this. I think I'm going to send this matter here. I think Dr. Vishnu Mahadio and a couple of them are looking at that hospital here. I understand a review is going on uh, to, to um, see the operations of that hospital here, especially in Belize, and see whether they have been throwing the line and so on. Um, but I, I thank you for raising this with us. Yes, um, brother, we are, I'm going to I'm going to raise it for them. There's an old saying: while the heart is growing, the grass while, while the grass growing, the heart is starving. So, look at the nurses because whenever you go to a service, it's some kind of ailment. Oh, nurse, he helped me. You know, and these are things we all got to look into. Thank you. No, very no, much, no. We can't. We cannot treat. We cannot treat our frontline workers and our professionals like that. We cannot do that. Yeah, but they just take away the bus in the, in the night, dropping those people up there. I don't know. It's, it's not easy for them, but it's not easy. Thank you. I will. Um, I, I'm going to do that, sir. I'm going to raise that. Thank, Thank you very you. much, sir. God bless Bye -bye. you. Yes. Thank you very much. And so I want to say good day to all the good folks down in Burbies, in the New Amsterdam area. I like New Amsterdam. It's a very quaint place, a very quaint town. Some good hotels there and so on. I was there a couple of weeks back and it is uh, such a peaceful place. Um, back in its heyday when there was a Rosignal ferry uh, the place was booming a lot. Um, they need some uh, rejuvenation right now. They need to find some economic activities, but it's such a quaint place. And then there's a, there's that Kanji Birch, uh, so many things here, landmarks, that, uh, and, and Barbies has many of them. So I want to say good day to the good folks there. And let me see whether our boys have been able to send us any texts here. What is happening down in, um, okay. Uh, yes, and there is um, some text coming in here. And so today, you got to think correctly with Amazon Warriors. Because of COVID, they decided to keep out of the playoffs. Them boys thinking about them health. And I, I like this person, got a good sense of humor. The Amazon Warriors decided that they're not going to take part in the finals. So, you know, they're taking care of the health. I like this person. Thank you very much for that. It's a smile for you guys out there. Uh, hi there. Good afternoon to you wonderful people at the Kaicho Radio. I wish to say something to our Guyanese brothers and sisters. Please come to your senses. Let, let us have peace and harmony again. Uh, politics is a very dirty game. At the end of the day, we all have to live in the same country. Love those thoughts. And you're so right on the money there. It is our country. We have to live with each other. We have to play dominoes with each other. We have to shop. Uh, we all have to shop at probably the same place. We have to go to the same supermarkets. Uh, we have to probably travel in the same minibuses and so on. Uh, when things happen, how do we, you know, how do we tell our kids? Uh, what do you say to your kids? Let's say um, uh, you're Indian and then you have a girl child and your girl child bring home somebody else that is of a different race. And you know many stories that the kids nowadays don't really care about race. They, 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 they are very, how you say it, they're very innocent to, to what the older folks, uh, what has been ingrained in them and the hate that would be in a lot of the, the older folks and to try to pass it on. Uh, many young people now don't know anything about Burnham. They don't know anything about Chetty. They've grown up on the Jack deal. They've grown up on the, the 90s. They've grown up on the, uh, this Apno FC. So don't talk race about them. They, they, they're good folks. And so when, you, when, when you're talking about that, let us be very, very, very clear that uh, this is not something that the young kids want. This is something that the politicians are pushing for, divide and conquer. And while they're doing that, they believe that they, they're conquering the wise people, the other people that are in there, the real people who are coming in to take away your wealth, smiling all the way to the bank. You know who those people are. And we're gonna talk a little about that in a very, very short while. So let's come back to some of these, um, uh, some of these messages. We also have a situation short bill. Our drainage system needs to be clean. Also, the road 
where the big value is kept is in a terrible condition. Is this short bill on the west coast of Demerara? I think that's it. Uh, that, that's on the west coast of Demerara there. So um, you guys need to make a complaint there to the NDC or to the RDC and let them point it out who needs to, to do that. Make sure that, look, you guys have the NDC and the RDC there. Make sure that you complain to them. Let them understand that you talk Kaicho Radio and Kaicho News if they don't want to listen to you. And tell them that you're gonna. I'm gonna take your name. Take all the names of these counselors, man. This is how you do. You walk into the place. What's your name, ma'am? Or oh, you're um, Leonard Gildari. I want you to take this complaint. And if the person give you a sighting, you just call. Tell them you call in the radio station. I'm giving your name. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go on social media and complain about you. So make sure that you name and shame these person. They've asked you for your vote to be, be able to go in there to give you something to uplift your life, to give you your, your your community and upliftment to come up with the programs that's going to see garbage uh, being taken away, that's going to see your uh, your forefoot being clean, that your road carpet being clean, that uh, your main canal being cleaned, and so on. Security in the area, maybe that they're working along with the community policing. And when they don't do that, they're not doing the, doing the, uh, doing the job that they were um, elected. Uh, to do so make sure that you don't uh, you're not afraid to tell them look i'm your employee you tell them that that i employ you open your mouth and tell them and you could tell them too that when i pay you my taxes let them understand very very clear that the money that i'm paying you is the one that that, that i'm paying to the council is the one that is paying you so let's get that very very clear understand our rights um Leonard, I hope that my Afro brothers cool their heads and not allow devious politicians to continue misleading them. We have to educate ourselves to fall in line on the treasures of the, the on the treasures on the horizon of Guyana. Let me be clear, we cannot have a rebel opposition leader and others that are sheep in wolves clothing, inciting people to riot when the police uh, did not conclude the investigation. Guyana is the only country to correct Exxon balance sheet. Let us hope. Uh, when Exxon signed the Payaro oil deal, our royalty should be around 20 to 30 percent. If this deal is signed, I would advise Gant to buy Exxon stock because if one invests 5,000 US dollars, your return should be three to four million dollars in four years. This is very, very good. Somebody knows that. Eh? Rioting and looting is not the way to go. So um, this is coming from that person. I'm happy what Mr. Ms. Walla Lawrence did, but I guess it's just an attack on Mr. Uh, I guess it was just an attack on Mr. Granger and Mr. Harmon. I'm not sure if, the, if it was um, smart politics and whether it's just an attack. I'm glad that they, the Barbies area has been cleared. Thanks, Ms. Lawrence. Two died from drugs or gang related uh, FU, FUs. I'm not sure. From what? From when I sent anything, you're not answering to nothing to say. Um, I'm not sure what this person is saying here. Um, dear Mr. Gildari, Sorry to hear that you're not getting enough sleep on, on, the, on the doctor. Also, it was advised that eucalyptus, eucalyptus, yes, oil is helpful. First time I'm hearing with that. You can apply some tape below and maybe it might help. Also, hope you feel better. I enjoy your show. Continue good work. Leonard, how are we going to, uh, how are we looking so stupid? The Chinese are eating back for a meal in China. Now innocent people are facing death for no cause. Uh, now I'm saying that the Chinese government must feel responsible for what's going on in Guyana. So don't blame the people in Guyana. No, ma'am. Or, or sorry, I'm not blaming the people in Guyana. What I'm saying, let us make sure that we uh, take care. Let us be responsible. Because whether we like it, whoever put it there, we have to face it. So we have to be responsible. Good day, Leonard. Just want you all to know, it's just one of the, the Henry boy who did beat that teacher and drag, drag her at the Barbies uh, High School. Um, I'm going to have to follow this story. I don't know anything about that. I called the police on Friday about five times from number eight. They were attacking my house. And up to now, they did not come. But when the rain come down, the people left. It was some people and from the village and some unknown. Um, hi, Leonard. Anyone get hold of the 17-year-old boy? Uh, I'm not sure what 17-year-old boy um, you guys are talking about here. Uh, I want to know. But uh, good day to you guys. Welcome to the Wake Up Guyana show, or wherever you're joining us from. And so let's get back to the line. Uh, Josh, do we have another caller in the air there? Let's put two of our callers there. And as they come, let's put us through. Good afternoon, Leonard. Hi, good afternoon, my brother. How, oh, you how are you doing, man? All right, man. All right. Go right there. You know that statement in Valla, Lawrence. I wouldn't take you serious, you know. 
Yes. If Bala Lanz was in the PNC, she would have not gone there. You know why? She wanted to show the people she's more powerful, more than Harmon and Granger. And I couldn't remember a time, I think it was last year, or the same year, she made a statement when, when job was not, except people who only get a job if they look like her, not look like Jack Deal. So she, uh, the statement that she's made is just to show lips and uh, throw water on duck back. Another thing there should be a CIA. And I, I think it's in this police force. Those police who was there and turned their backs, I think they should get their numbers and dismiss them from the force. You can't be paying people money to help crime and then you're turning your back. What are we paying them for? This police force, if you got about 3,000 of them, half of them got to be dismissed. They are not worthwhile. And we've got a COI in the GCOM, um, in that GCOM there. And when you find I, people guilty, uh, you put them in. Uh, or you, if um, you catch people murdered and you catch them um, guilty, you hang them, you bring back the hangman's rope. Only then people can understand really what's going on here. Because you got criminals who murdering people and go to, the jail, go to the court, they go to jail and come back and they still up on the street. You got to hang these people them. Get rid of them from society. This thing can't well, I, I, I want to agree with you that we, we have to see some uh, more, more tougher measures. I'm not sure about the hanging because most of the countries in the world, they're not allowing it. Because we've signed on to some, um, uh, some conventions abroad, international human rights conventions and so on. But I agree, we got to put some very, very tough measures when you see these things here. We should not be allowing it. We should not and be allowing it. Another thing, the ethnic relation. There was to do an investigation with Winston Jordan, Bartik, and Moses Nagamoto. One year and months have passed. Those statements were those two guys made. And the ethnic relation did nothing. Like they were asleep, and they're still sleeping. And the Guyana human rights, like they went in quarantine. Is now the week. Oh, don't talk about that. Don't even go there. That the Guyana Human Rights Association, for more than a decade since I remember myself, is a two man show. Nobody else there. Nobody knows where they operate from. Nobody knows the number or anything. I'm not sure when you just see them conveniently, whenever they're supposed to be talking, they need to get somebody, another human rights association. I'm not sure how they got that, but that's where madness is happening there. Just like how we accusing the ERC of doing absolute madness, and you have even members that is uh, um, inciting ethnic tensions, you have the again, human rights association is a big joke. Gilavi says so. And I think they should have stopped putting money in this, in this ethnic relation. You waste the time with that thing too. You gotta get people, you gotta get par impartial people. You can't get people. You know the reason you know the reason why why we have this issue here? Because people and this is this is this is this goes across the board. I'm talking about Hong Kong's NDC regulators, they don't understand the job, and those that understand the jobs, uh, they're the ones who are taking advantage. Some of them taking bribes. Some of them taking bribes, Gilavi saying so. Man, I, I could, this is I, like I, the GGMC. You could I, look at, you, I, can you, second you, you I could tell you so many stories, man. I can but it is what that. it is. This place, there's a lot of dirty things going on. It's got to get cleaned up. We have to clean up this country. And if this thing go ahead and not a couple years from now, this country die. Everybody doomed, they're doomed. They can't do nothing. But we have to revamp this police force. We've been talking about it growing up, like how we talking about potential Guyana got. We talking mm. about the revamping of the police force. It's always something. The cops, when they go into the walk, like I said yesterday, the first thing they say, where you want to go? Or if they have an option, they say, boss, could you put me out on the street? Yeah, yeah, and they I don't care that. whether the sun hot or, or the rain falling. They want to be out in the streets as a traffic officer. That's the best thing that can happen. They want to make oh, money wow. on the road. They like make money on the road. But again, oh, I, we know we know what it is. We know what it is. Anyway, so I'm making sure I'm making sure that all my car documents are ready. Can nobody lock me up or nobody uh, telling me? Them I would find something. You drive your car, something she can't eat. They find me, they can give you charge. Anything this happens, I want money. They do anything for get money. This is the type of. I'm not saying we got good police in this force, you know. No, they got this. I know a lot of them, and I, I I'm good friends with a lot of them there. But uh, get, they know when mean? I take pot shots to them, is they got a couple of rogue people. Who there and why when they leave the job in the afternoon is another job they're going to take sometime probably in the underworld. So, you know, well, we're anyway, we very much aware of I want, to I want to congratulate me by York, man. You get a job, a good position here. <laughs> I know, is it a job? He was always taking pot shots at that time. I want to say good day to you, Mr. And I, and I to York, do my good, 
I do hope what he preach in 592 that he delivers. Well, we you know, I think next week he and I are supposed to come back on the show. I work in it hard. I've been, been talking to him every single day. So let's see what happens. At least one day a week, at least I could bring him back. We're going to be back with the show, though. Ah, and this time, it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be even more, um, uh, more talkative than the other one. <laughs> um, tell me something. I just, uh, uh, Mr. Mansoor Nader is positive, too. I understand that he is. Oh, and why, you, now this budget department, and who was the deputy speaker for that budget? I, I, really didn't, I really didn't really get a thing. And did they have yeah, yeah. Lennox Schumer who had a deputy? He is a deputy speaker. But he, but he, but he, didn't, um, he didn't take part in that? I can't remember. I did have a look at this. I'm going to have to look back at it um, because I, I got to make some calls. And there's some things about the budget that I, I, I got to come back and have a discussion. All right, well, you take care. Bye. God bless you. Bye, bye. Um, so until then. So thank you very much, Jake Call, all the way from Diamond on the East Bank of Demerara Radio. So I did find um, the latest COVID-19 in according to the official Gazette. And the gentleman from uh, Barbies that called with regards to who are essential workers and essential services. And let me read it. It is going to go. Well, let me read it. This is very important. The following essential businesses may carry on uh, operations for 24 hours each day. And this is 24 hours. These are essential business. Hospitals, healthcare and medical services, including pharmacies, drug stores, and private vet services, nursing homes, orphanages, shelters, and other related care services, immigration, the judiciary, parliament, the diplomatic corps, um, uh, the revenue authority, maritime, National Emergency Operations Center, water supply services, including collection, storage, purification, and distribution of water for public use. The um, discipline forces, the prison services, solid waste management, um, solid waste management and janitorial services, including living domestic workers, National Drainage and Irrigation Authority, and traffic control, Demar Harbor is in the Barbies Ridge, medical schools, hotel and accommodation, electricity and energy services, including the uh, oil and gas sector, and those who provide uh, services to the oil and gas sector, businesses that ensure global continuity of supply of mining and petroleum materials and products, um, for example, metals and minerals such as bauxite, gold, and diamond. Um, Mineral and, and petroleum production development operations, production and processing, mineral and petroleum exploration and development, mining and petroleum supply and services uh, that support uh, uh, supply chains in the mining and petroleum sector industries, um, businesses and operations that engage in the cotton processing and preparation of trees into lumber and ensure continuity of supply of forest products. Security services including uh, private security, telecom uh, providers including internet, telephone, call center operators, media houses of the year, thank you Lord, uh, broadcasting and again the National Printers Limited, port authorities including bulk marking uh, operations and loading and offloading of marine vessels, petroleum vessels, ships, bulk and containerized uh, uh, vessels. Port services, logistics, and freight services, including transportation, transportation of market goods, produce, dry goods, and beverages. This is interesting. So, if you join the core, if you you could uh, you could um this is essential thing: transportation of market produce, dry goods, and beverages. So, if they caught you, if they catch you in the night, um, if they catch you in the night. You could be able to tell them, but wait a minute, this is what uh, the official guys that says I'm allowed to be on the road. So if you're in the transportation business for market produce, dry goods and beverages, you have a, um, an excuse there, you're essential worker. Public and private sector construction according with the safety standards applied in paragraph NG. Factories, manufacturers and distributors. Services are attorney at law, they could work 24 seven. Fisher folk. So fishermen to work 24 seven. The following service may be open 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily each day. Banks, financial institutions, 
remittances, remittances services and support services. Market, supermarkets, fruit and vegetable stalls, bulk food, stores and neighborhood grocery shops, um, gas stations, postal and uh, shipping services, funeral homes, interesting, 24 seven. Beauty salons, this one I couldn't get, I couldn't understand this. Beauty salons and barbershop, these things are up close and personal, I don't agree with this one here. Operations, inspector, inspection, oh my God, lots of rain here. Repair and maintenance of essential services, including vehicles. So a body workshop or a mechanic shop could open. Traffic signal maintenance. Automotive repair and maintenance facilities. Hardware, plumbing, electrical storage. Clothing, shoes and bookstores. Services necessary for the maintenance of residents, including plumbing. Um, and of course, you could only um, restaurants or food service shall only be open for delivery, drive through for flight pickup and takeaway services. Indoor and buffet dining is prohibited. So we come back to what the gentleman was asking us. Um, these center services are hospitals, healthcare, medical services, lots of homes. So these people are allowed to be on the road because of these services. Um, and I think that's about it. I, I, I think I, I think that's about it. So in the meantime, well, while our boys are coming back, um, while our boys are coming back with some other calls here, I'm going to have to ask them. Uh, we are going to bring you some um, some other thing here. Good afternoon, Mr. Gilar. I'm listening to the guy that's talking about the nurses. Can you please advise us as rice farmers what category we fall under? Because the fact remains the access is not good to and from the field. Uh, so we leave the fields early. We sometimes reach the road after 6 p.m. Please also advise us while we are the various mills waiting for a truck to discharge. If that's, that's a charge truck because sometimes we take days to get our party discharge at peak hours. Uh, let me go back. Very good question. Um, transportation of market produce, dry goods or beverages. Um, if you are in the business, let me see. Let's see here, solid waste management. Let me see. Electricity, petroleum, um, business that engaged in the flooding, um, for trucks. I think the dry goods is, is, is where you might fall under you in. You're in the manufacturing sector, so I think you you would be allowed um, as part of, of that to take this up there. You can't stop the business. Uh, so I'm going to seek some clarification, but I hear your point there uh, as, as what you're saying there. But I think you you would be safe. I'm going to get some clarification there. Um, Len, I'm sending you this. Uh, can you please? Uh, no, I, I'm not sure who is that. A better value for better protection. Get your ship and car. Oh, my God. Everything that he was sending to us. Do we have another call on the line there, Josh? Um, uh, let's put our people on on line there. In the meantime, while Josh is coming on, let's say a good day to our folks. Okay, okay. Sorry about that, Josh. To our folks there, let's see where we have another call there. And of course, I want to say good day to Rats, Chrissy, Prasad, uh, Mohammed Halim, Karen Smith, RNJJ, these are some funny names, Karen Smith, uh, Karishma C.C. Paul, Elizabeth Ramturan, Camila Singh. I want to say thank you very much for joining us, for being with us today. Um, and, and let us see how we can get it. Mal Samwaru, um, uh, Randy Cole, Nalini Singh, um, let me see what else. Kelma Drakes, how are you doing? Thank you for being with us today. Uh, Jai Pusar, um, uh, Vikram Ragunana, Randy Cole, Gloria Manoir. Uh, so um, in the meantime, let's go back. Um, uh, let's go back. Do we have any other callers on the line here? Uh, Josh, if not, uh, if you're not joining us, it's a Wake Up Gayani show. It is 99.1, 99.5, and we, you could also get us on Kaicho Radio um, uh, on Facebook or Kaicho Radio live stream on Facebook, um, on YouTube rather. 
And I want to say good day to the people along in Escobar there, from Anna Regina, from Supernam, from Charity, all the way up in the Pomeroon, wherever you would join us from. Of course, all the way to Port Kaichuma, um, Region 9 there in Lethem. How are you guys doing? Into the, um, the Rupununi Savannas, Madia. I know some of you guys are getting us um, by the internet. So I want to say good day to you. There's some folks that is tuning in to us here also all the way from Brazil. So I want to say good day also to, to you guys here. Um, uh, we don't, uh, let me see, okay, sure. do we have any other um, news that's coming out here? Okay, the police are saying here now that between uh, 10, 17 and 10, 30 hours today, that they conducted that there was a port mortem examination uh, performed on the body of Harry Singh. This is a teen, a 17 year old that was killed up in Burbizay, West Belize, by a government pathologist, Dr. Nihal Singh, at the Memorial Garden Funeral Home and Crematorium. The uh, pathologist found the cause of death to be brain hemorrhage and blunt trauma to the head, and um, also there were compression injuries to the neck. So it looked as if he was hit, squeezed, um, and uh, you know he would have bled to death. He has brain; he was had bleeding in his brains and so on there. And so the body was handed over for for burial there. Um, so it is, you know, when when you look at some of these things, what could have seventeen year old? What kind of injuries could he have suffered? Uh, what how long did he um, suffer for? When did he fight back? I mean, when when you look at this. Why did he go down into the back dam? I think a lot of people are asking that question. Why did he go down into the back dam when he knew that the situation was tense? I mean, he was doing his work, but knowing that he was heading down into the back dam there to probably take water to some workers there. Um, did he know that the situation was that tense? Was he oblivious of, to, the, to that? Was he innocent of, of, of everything? We understand that he was friends to the two boys that were killed. Is there more to the story that meets the eye? So we have to be, um, we have to continue paying uh, attention to this story here because, um, uh, so right away there, um, while we're waiting on our boys uh, down in the studio there to see whether there's another call online, um, uh, one second with us guys. Uh, I want to say good day to Ramsoy Tiwari. How are you doing, sir? Police needs to be transferred. <laughs> other precincts so switch them around the Amerindians will do a better job um and of course uh we have here another day Harlow has been given a part in the government Dr. Yog Mahadi says uh says some right thing others waiting to see if uh, you would be given a position I'm not asking for a position I'm a, 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 a media person I'm not that. yes good day call you go, go ahead how are you doing uh, easy um right. I can't tell me what's bothering you Huh? Tell me what's bothering you, man. What's bothering you? Um, since April, the army put it in the old extension, 65 years. Yeah. I want to know if I receive them. The maternity date tomorrow, the date tomorrow. The, um, the how long were you put in print? Um, young Charam. No, no. How long ago did you do that? April. April, no, it's going to take a, a, a little while. They, they, they have some backlogs here. But I'm trying to get the, 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 the old age pension person. When they tell you, how long did they tell you it's going to take? Six weeks. Six weeks, and, and it's been since April. Well, all right, um, keep checking with them. I'm going, to bring back, I'm going to bring back the lady here, and then maybe I am not at liberty to give out her number. I wish I could do that. She's not even answering my call. I think um, maybe they're busy with something. I'm going to send her a text again and bring her back and let's see whether we can have some answers here. Maybe look into your particular case. But there are thousands of persons like you who will be complaining. All right? Yeah. Thank you very much, my brother. I'm going to look into this case here. Yeah, um, Mr. Leonard, you're doing a wonderful work. Why I try it here. It's, it's pretty tough. Uh, the, you know, the COVID-19 and everything. I'm hoping to be back at work next week to get some help from my boys there. Um, I'm operating from home at the moment. So let's see how that goes. Well, thank you very yeah. much. Well, thank you. God bless you. Um, so we are going to try to bring back, uh, there's many thousands. I, I'm unable to tell you 
where is the start, where um, your uh, uh, NIS um, process is at, at the moment with us because we don't have the NIS people here and maybe they could probably um, give us a number. I think NIS should have a, a number, maybe a WhatsApp number or maybe a phone number that you could text in your information and they could get back to you. Um, um, but uh, let us see what happens here. Um, uh, so, in the meantime, in the meantime here, um, Josh, Josh is killing me to, to read something here. One, one second, folks, just bear with me. And if you get another call there, Josh, go right ahead. Josh, go right ahead. Go right ahead, Josh. Um, so, so, so in the meantime, my apologies. I had to read something there for Joshua. You know, these guys come with all kinds of things. Like they don't see me get enough work and they're giving me more work to do. But I want to say good day to Mr. Gavin Digar and wife down there at, at that um, very big uh, silk cotton tree there at um, Providence, uh, my pony. He called me this morning and he wanted to know, he and his wife, wonderful folks, very warm folks. And they know my family. You know, we got some people here who probably even know more about you than, 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 than you would know. Good afternoon. How are you doing, ma'am? How are you doing? I'm okay. How are you? What's bothering you? Pretty good, pretty good. What's bothering you today, um, ma'am? Let's hear it. Something is bothering me. Is it 25000 for grants, cash grants? Um, what, you have to file for a form or something? No, you don't have to do anything. Do not do anything. I understand. I was told by an NDC person that Initially, they were given instructions by the NDC. The NDC, the, the, the orders came down for them to find, I think, about 50 families in every area or something. That was initially. The president then come out and says every household. He didn't say, he didn't say every house. He said every household. So if you get two or three families living inside one building, you might very well see three, those three families getting help. That is what he said. Every household is going to get that 25000 You don't have to pull out anything. Y'all don't pull out anything. Anybody come. Uh, you know, you're, you're not obligated to pull out anything because they're going to find the mechanism. I think what they're battling right now is how they can share all the money, whether you want it in a hamper or you want it in cash. And then, of course, there's also the issue they, they want to share out some money for every student as well as a uniform allowance. So they are still going to do that. So they're working out how they can do it. That's what they did at the moment. But they did announce it during the budget and the president did announce it. It's every household. So you don't have to register. Okay, because I hear some people, you know, some people said that. Don't bother with them, man. They, they probably a lot of people don't know. And um, whatever they don't know, they probably would have um, registered via the, um, via the NDC. So you don't have to register anymore because you, you are... You have your own family and everything and so you're part of a household you would be eligible for that at least that was that is what i was told speaking with a number of ministers among others okay so they will as you say they will come yeah yeah they are going to make the announcements and i guess so we i'm waiting anxiously on it too and i think they're working hard to see how because the budget does something passed and so yeah. what they're going to do now is that the budget has to be signed into law and whatever it is there's something that the president has to sign in the minute that they do that, then uh, the money could be released and so on. As of now, the money has, hasn't been released for it. So they might okay. get a couple more days before the president oh, signs in. Okay, next thing. Do you have any, like, any social thing, like, where you can get money for, um, what happened? My husband died and I'm alone with the children. Yes, yeah, so that, that's a very good question. I think I would have had Minister of um, Human Services, Vindi Prasad. She says our ministry has several kinds of help for those uh, people um, who would be vulnerable, fall into the vulnerable category. Yourself would be falling into that uh, that category based on what you see in there. If you're not getting any help, where are you living, ma'am? Just, uh, just give me a broad area, not the specific I'm, address. I'm living at Barbies. Barbies. All right. Um, in Burbis there, I, I must find out from the region if there's a Ministry of Human Services um, office up there or whether you have to come in Georgetown. But if you could find the Ministry of Human Services um, uh, office down, down in Georgetown here, 
you could call them and find out what the procedure but that is the, the the ministry that you would want to ask for any kind of help um that you may need it, it probably takes some time but it's better for you to sign up and hope that the process goes through quickly than to not do that it's like a house lot if you want a house lot don't talk about it make sure that the application is in all right okay thank you god bless you my sister bye-bye so you know um and I think the, what we've seen here, some of the questions, some of the queries that are coming in, mm -hmm. a lot of people are not very familiar with some of the government services that they have offered. And it was interesting talking to Dr. Vindia Prasad the other day, just some of the things that she was talking about there is right away, help for the vulnerable people, help for the um, um, persons, like if you um, in a domestic violence situation, you've been beaten or something happened to you um, that you have a traumatized an experience that you could get that those kind of help. If you have been in a domestic uh, violence uh, scenario, she's saying that um, they are training people now who's going to work with you instead of you going to the station, that there are people that you could reach out to and that person will work with you from the way to the station all the way up to the court and see you, give you counseling and guide you through the entire process instead of you going in like what that idiot thing that you had happened at the station the other day that a woman ran out of our house almost half naked went to the police station spying on police station i hope that they, they, that, that those two ranks have been put uh, um uh, in mark duty or whatever that you do that needs to punish them because they need to have a very clear understanding they need to read read some of the standard operating procedures when it comes to how they should uh, present themselves as police ranks to the public. And if they have not been punished, they need to be punished because they, that was unbelievable. So there must be help for those persons who are in a situation where, you know, they depend on the husband. And so they don't want to talk anything because that man is providing a living for them. The man is providing money for them. He's working, but he believes he could come home and kick the hell out of that woman. And, you know, it is okay. She's afraid to talk because she has four, three, four hungry mouths to feed. And, and so there's no help. The ministry, the minister said that there's some help that is coming out there. So I kind of like those kind of things. We have to make use of these services and they have these services there. If you believe a child has been um, hit, if you believe a child has been um, uh, suffering, um, um, uh, that uh, you could take that to that case there without even talking to the parents, to the Child Care Protection Agency, which is down on Broad Street there, Broad and Russell Street, I think it is. I think Anne Green, very proactive woman. One of these days, I'm going to invite her onto the show. Um, you should hear some of the cases, some uh, some cases uh, she can't be able to say on air because you got to protect the privacy and the rights of these children and the families and so on. But if you hear some of the um, uh, the cases, the abuse, the sexual abuse, um, the, the, the physical abuse, of some of these children that they had to take them away. If you see some of these kids that are placed in, in halfway homes, waiting for maybe family to adopt them. If you know about our orphanages and what they're going through, start paying attention and then we understand. We understand that while we fighting and while we going about doing these things here, there's the other side of the picture. There's the hidden side of Vienna that nobody's paying. And for a long time, many years, over the years, the vulnerable has slipped through the cracks. They have suffered. If you go to the post office and you maybe, you take a couple, you know, follow a couple of these guys, a couple of these older folks um, who, who's going there to collect their little pension that they're getting, maybe their little NIS, um, who are fortunate to receive NIS and they get their old age pension as well. Follow them, um, the, the ones that may be getting, if you can find out uh, some of them who are just getting the old age pension at 20 something thousand dollars, going to $25,000 now, thanks to the budget. There's a couple thousand dollars more, but it is, it is what it is. But you follow them and see the kind of life that they're living and the dependency and some of the, um, the, the shame that they, they, they would look at you and say, I wish that I had known better um, that if you see, uh, you know, the kind of things, some of them are very fortunate to have good people around them, but uh, they go and they live, they live day to day, dependent on that kind of something thousand dollars. 
carry them through and some of the days that they don't have the money they're praying for the next day to come these are the stories these are the stories that bring tears to your eyes i would have gone to a couple of them and you know when you listen and you listen and you hear uh you, you hear how they live and it doesn't bother while we busy cleaning for them to clean it yes good afternoon quality on the air go right ahead no sir I just, you, like, you I just like to know if karma will work for you like it worked for Dr. Yu. Who called again? <laughs> who called well, again? What, what, what is karma? I Did he do something wicked and it's paid? No, he's paid no, the price for it? Again, I know, Rag, so many names that he become <laughs> the head. Now, I'm thinking that you've talked about one particular utility company, some of that used to become the head. You know who we're talking about, right? GTN. No, let, let me tell you, it's a GTN. You know, this morning I had another internet service hooked up by me, network, because uh, GTNT is so um, I, I I'm ashamed to even talk about it, but um, uh, that does not. You see, GTNT is a private company. Yeah, but, but you I, can be I, 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 I'm I a reporter at the individual real. newspaper. I can't go work at anywhere else. I did my job, but I had to do. But I hear you. It's a funny thing okay. to think about. But as it relates to the police, one of the things that we have not done, and I can't remember when. I don't think it has ever been done. One of the things that I'm upset that I have to advise these things we have people there who can know these things and do these things we have been created a big big traffic police we don't have police doing anything else other than traffic even the ones in the van stops more vehicles than the traffic police we don't do investigations proper investigations in this country too many things happen and we just hold the one man who was there and seen and then find out who did it and who went where and who did what and we need to upgrade the police force into a place where it does proper investigations in this country, not this crap that is going on right now. As it and I, I, I agree with you because for too long we've been talking about this. We need to fix it now. We need to fix yes. it. In talking and making sense, if we can't, the present people that can't do it there. Now, I'm not saying that we need to do it, but Trinidad did it. They brought in a guy from outside because the inside people wasn't going to do it. And then now they have it at Trinidad you're running it. So if we got to do that, we got to do that. Um, secondly, yeah, yeah, secondly, yeah, go right there. When it comes to the lady that talked just now, one of the things that Christopher Jones' story brought out that people should know that there are lots of things that are available for people and organizations in Guyana that we are unaware of. For instance, that grant that he was able to apply for, which he should not have been eligible before, was available. Oh, that's him. madness. That is absolutely madness. They have to investigate that because yeah, when you get things it, like that, how do you, you how, how, right? The thing about it is that those grants were available for Guyanese comp. Um, place people and they didn't know it was there only people knew the mm -hmm. ministry of social service has a lots of program for single mothers and men i can tell you years ago when i fell on my back i got my, all of my tools bought for me by the ministry of social service and protection their service is available to Guyanese do not know that you can go there it takes some time you got to sit down a couple of days run and go and think but you do get help and if guy not only from them their um what is last name the British, the Canadians, and the Americans, they offer things to Guyanese directly if you apply. But we do not do these things and we stay home and we cry. There are things available that Guyanese should be able to know about and apply for. And I hope you get well soon because I think you're bluffing this COVID thing. You're looking too strong, eating a lot of grapes and apples, and I'm watching you. Have a good day. No, I have to put, I have to put it on the system because I'm getting dry. I'm getting dehydrated. Fast. This is one of the things. I, I'm not sure if anybody else, I haven't spoken to anybody else. This is one of the things that I found with this entire thing that you get dehydrated very, very quickly. You know, and the gentleman did raise a very good point. I thank you very much for that before we go back and read some messages. Um, there's so many services that are available there within the various ministries. We got to start paying attention. There's the Amerindian Development Fund that I think the government says that they put uh, several hundred million dollars into it uh, so they could uh, probably, you know, develop the Amerindian um, uh, the indigenous people of Guyana, but the, we also have within the social services uh, thing, which is a big area, which is uh, should be one of the biggest ministries in terms of the help that they're putting out to the people. We have to continuously uh, upgrade ourselves, educate ourselves about these services, um, uh, the counseling services. Um, a lot of people don't know, but there's a whole bunch of things that they have there. Um, if you are, uh, you're falling on hard times, you could apply. Even at the Ministry of Health, too, that if you're seeking some help, that there's some kind of uh, monies that are available there, that if you're going to get an emergency special operation and it's not available normally, 
that you could get a limit that could be available to you. The government could approve that. So there's many, many things that could happen there that we could benefit from, but we need to familiarize ourselves. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. How are you doing? Um, no complaint. No complaint? Yes. That's yes. very good. Regardless, I like that. Regardless of all the challenges I'm going through and all the side effects, and I have to be strong. You mm. don't think so? I want you to be strong too. Thank you very much, my and dear. I want Go you, right ahead. I want you to think positive and you will get better. Because yes, I, I, I am. Because, because if I could find, fight cancer, I think you can do it. I appreciate and I, that. Babe. Yes, and I wish you all the best. And, you know, let us let us have patience and wait for the government and to do what they have to do. Because I, I hear a lot of people complaining, you know, but things cannot happen, you know, like you plant a tree today, you're not going to bear today. You know, we have to mm. wait because, you know, a lot of things they have to look after. So, you know, we have to have some patience because I am one who needs help too. So, so I'm just keeping my finger crossed and think our, our president will do something good for us. But we have to wait. We have, just have to have patience. So all the people who ask asking for help and whatever, I ask them, pray, let's pray for our country and pray for everyone. And things going to get better. You do you think so? Yes, I do appreciate that. And yeah. um, because we, we have to, we can just uh, sit here uh, and and just believe that our country is going to go for, forward. Um, I think there's there's need for us to bring back God into our lives, into what yes. we do. Some people might not believe, but it is indeed true. No, God is great, and we live yes. our trust in His hand. He know what He's doing. God yes, is slow, but He's sure to. So let's Thank take it much, one sir. day at a time. And you take care, yes, my dear. Yes, Bye -bye. you too, and uh, God bless you for that. God bless you too. So, Bye. It's very uplifting words from that lady there. She said she is a cancer, um, survivor cancer patient. Um, and so when you hear things like that, and they can tell you, you have, you know, you know, we have our battles, but uh, you know, when we believe we debate, there's some other persons who got it worse than you. And so they, they're battling it through, they're lifting up their heads, they're going about the business every day. Do not allow yourself to fall. Remember, I did uh, point out uh, to you at the beginning of this show, the greatest glory in living, the greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time that we fall. So it is not how hard that you fall on, it's how well we rise and we rise every moment. And so it, it is, that is very, very important. So let us uh, make sure that we dust off, we get up, and we continue trudging on because that is what matters. That is what's going to lead us to our destination. So we're going to fall many times, but let's ensure that we, we gather strength and say we're not going to give up. We're not people like that. So in the meantime, uh, Josh, whenever you're ready, please put those calls in. We have uh, it's 2 39. We have about 20 minutes, uh, about, 20, uh, about 15 minutes more to go. Let's see, see how um, we get our people here. Um, they, uh, I personally think they should. I okay. personally think they should contact people in the area and work with them. I know a lady off my street and the boy opposite me is taking names of the person. They're good friends, so she came and put all her children' name on the list because a four daughter each has a child. What I know is that one of the daughters living down still by herself, but she's claiming that all her other children still entitled to twenty-five thousand dollars. Thank you very much for that. Good afternoon to you, Len. There's someone living in my house that I really want them to have. They're stealing electricity and water. Um, also, I'd really like to know if the Ministry of Housing is fully open to the public. Yes, they are fully open. Um, and uh, you should... Well, I don't understand how somebody is living in your house. That it's your house. That how are they living there? You have a property there? And um, if they're stealing electricity, it's very, very clear how you could do that. The GPL has to be told. Um, and so... But the Ministry of Housing, I'm not sure what the circumstances are. You, we, I have to get more details before I can make some, um, maybe advise you accordingly. Um, they said that they're going to give one family to take the name of the other person living in, in the boat. Um, I'm not sure uh, about this. Like I said before, don't bother with that. They're not taking any names as far as I know. I have not received that, and, I, and the government has not made any statements to this effect. 
Leonard Y quarantine board these people have to go to Georgetown to get a police clearance and it take one week off let the police pass it on yes of course you know these are things that we should be able to you know like how you have the immigration officer in Burbies here I think you could be able to not have to come to Ivalary to get your records on there um, we should be able to uh, apply maybe at a passport office up in Burbies and uh, see if you could get it there. These are things that we need to, to, to talk about. I probably would raise this with uh, Minister Robertson Bell anytime we have a chat and see um, uh, whether they could um, uh, tell us anything. Uh, I applied for water since uh, January 2020. Since then, I've been running to the Green and Hoop office twice to send the workers to disconnect my service, which they did not supply. Um, now the case of COVID is on the rise and my neighbors are skeptical for persons to enter the yard. Please uh, need help. Um, hmm, I'm going to have to ask Josh to send me this number here with this person with this water since January 2020. And I can probably pass on to the authorities. Hi, Leonard, I don't get it. If the budget is catering for the remaining months of the year, how come the pensions have to wait until January 2020, 2021 for the increase? I am not sure about this. I um, uh, I didn't see 2021. I see January 2020. It goes back to. So let me get some more details on this. The housing scheme that I'm living in, uh, living in, all the lots are occupied. So the person opposite me wrote down the people name um, and phone number that I'm not living in the scheme and wrote down the empty lots next to this padded list. Oh my. And if somebody could send me these details, you guys got to come. Let me do those zone. You know, we're not talking in the breeze here. We need to know where this thing is happening. Do we know who these people are? Um, I wish I would know the day when the people come to my scheme and would point out how many people are living in one building, especially around my area. And this is interesting. This is interesting indeed. Um, uh, because we're talking right now, people are really raising the issue. I'm glad you should pay attention to everything that happens. If you believe that we're going to allow a couple of people to take advantage and steal this money here, we're not going to do that. So you guys have to be, you guys got to be watching each other. Make sure that whatever mechanisms is being put into place, that you pay attention, that you watch who the people are managing uh, the money, the distribution, and that uh, if you see anything wrong, you need to point out to them, take pictures, take videos, because you need to make it public. We need to stop them in the track. You don't want to hear six months after that. Major fraud discovered in distribution of $25,000 COVID-19 help. I would hate to hear that. And anybody who does that um, and is caught uh, might be the first one in this space. It's name and shame time. And so let us, you know, let us do that. We need to name and shame some of the people in this country here. Uh, so as we go forward, uh, that they would think twice of ever robbing anybody in this country or believing they could get away with it. Start naming and shaming them. Leonard Gildari, you're the one, you can't do this. Uh, you're not entitled to do that. And somebody I did see, uh, did ask a, a little thing, if Yoga already got this thing, say someone got something, what is Leonard Gildari getting? No, 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 no. I never asked for any position. I, I tell you how this whole, whole thing started. If you've been with us, you know it started on March the second. I went up to the radio room. Nothing was happening, at least nothing that I liked. And I said, "What's happening here?" So I sat myself down in the chair. I said, "Glenn will have to kill me today because I am going to do something with radio, and I don't have any idea what clues it is. I didn't have a clue what it is that I was going to do." And I sat down in the chair. I said, let me call a couple of people to give me a little update what is happening down on the, um, at the various polling stations. I call uh, Jerry Gouvail. I call um, some um, ministers. I call some opposition people, Gail Teixeira and a couple and so on and so forth, Priya Manic Chan and so on. And that is how we started it. And it was never for, for us what well, wasn't to do anything except we wanted we had a radio station and then it needed to work and that was the idea so gildari is not uh, you know sorting for anything i have a wonderful job um well i'm not sure what is the job I, I i'm a reporter editor um and i go down up in the radio and i also do radio so what's my job i have so many things that i'm doing i'm columnist also i write i write the one that we call them um and i have absolutely i had absolutely no idea what i was doing but I want to share with people um, my thoughts. I started out with housing when I was building my house. 
and I talked about the, the contractor. I wanted to kill my contractor and um, and the problems that I had with my election and so on and how you should apply for a house, that, how you should apply for a plan to build a home and how to apply for your water connection and so on and so forth and the hassles that I went through. Um, what are some of the best materials to, hold, to build a home? I ended up with 100 articles with that and then I bought it to an end. And so I ended up with a column every week. Um, not sure how that happened, but you have to do what you have to do. So uh, I want to say good day. Um, a good day to the good folks on there in Essequibo. Um, uh, I'm not sure about this police clearance thing. I've made a note on it. I'm going to talk about the police clearance thing. I'm going to ask Minister Robertson Ben on the police clearance whether there's something else that could be done that would allow people to get police clearance in Barbies and in Essequibo and maybe in the various regions. I think that is what the, what the government is working on, um, that in every region becomes a a, a, a capital kind of, or a kind of um, head office for the government in that region where you can access some of the services like passports and things like that. They're moving towards the direction of that. Um, uh, one thing you can ask for, please take 500, Please take 500 of these children, the homeless kids. You know, somebody is saying that I should adopt 500 children. Oh my goodness. I can barely manage with two and three of them right now, much as 500. But I would sit by um, and, and see what happens. I want to say a good day to Anne Barclay and all the good people down there in Leg One. Thank you very much for tuning in uh, to us today. Sometimes I forget you guys, and you know, forgive me for that. Um, as I remember, I, I never, I went to leg one a couple of times, never went to Wakenham. I want to go to Hog Island and I, I understand Port Island is also very beautiful. Um, and I did pass you guys and go all the way to um, Lake Mainstay, pass um, Kapui and so on and went to Lake Mainstay in region two there. I went all the way to uh, Molson Creek. I went to some places in Guyana that I would want to visit again. I went to a place um, uh, that is just uh, the Kuriburn area, that's just where the Milo Falls is. And so, you know, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, uh, we have some beautiful places here. You would not believe it. Um, the tall tower and mountains. One of my guys I was talking to, one of my neighbors uh, talking to recently, he said he went to the highest point in Guyana. And he says it's so cold in the night here, you have to wear se several layers of um, clothing. So imagine we have places like that in Guyana that it, to be as hot as anything and as cold as anything during the day. So, uh, you know, there's uh, there's so so many things that we could talk about about this wonderful land of ours. But guess what? We have to talk a little about oil. Don't forget that you guys have to think. I think we'd have to maybe sometime or the other, if you're talking about protesting for your rights, protesting for somebody, kill somebody. How about us protesting maybe do some peaceful picketing in front of Exxon Mobil and so on and so forth. Um, you want a better deal, let's put some pressure on them. Why not? Don't you want a better deal? Don't you want a better pension? Let us start moving in that direction. Let's put these things behind us. We can do without, we can do without us fighting with each other because at the end of the day, this country has to move forward. We still have to live with each other. If you want to play a game of dominoes and there's nobody else and you look across, you can see Arnold and your name is Ganesh. You're going to ask Arnold and you know who Arnold is. You're going to ask Arnold to be a gay part of the game. If you're drinking, you want to drink buddy. If you're in the drinking mood and you see somebody and you don't have anybody else, you're going to ask Arnold and Ganesh is going to do that. So, you know, at the end of the day, we have to understand what is important for this country. And fighting with each other is not what is very important. On behalf of Kaicho Radio and Mr. Glenn Lal and everybody else, let us get our act together. Let us understand what is important. Let us understand what is the priority in this country. Priority is our resources, natural resources. Priority is our gold, diamond, and oil, our bauxite, our timber. Let us understand that. Our fish, let's ensure that we get a good deal of it and uh, make sure that our children benefit of that. It isn't about you and me anymore. It's about children. Let's leave something, a legacy for them that we could have money in the kitty jar that next couple of years that we could have five Harbor Bridge. We could have two roads leading to Barbies or three roads. We could have a Linden Letham Road. 
we could be thinking about money that we have here. We could be opening up our, our business that is going to allow everybody. If you want to build a bridge, they open it and say, look, you're going to become a shareholder. All guy is going to become a shareholder. And somebody did offer the opinion not too long ago that why not take some of our money and invest it in shares on Exxon shares. We should do that. We should look into that and see whether, you know, we can't make some money um, because at the end of the day, it is about us. It is about our children. And so I, I know I would have rambled. And I think lately I, I've come on here and um, talk a little and preach a little about things that should matter to us. And that's because I'm getting very upset when I see people calling and just scrambling for a few little pension dollars. It, it matters to them. It is important to them. But we deserve so much more. And there's so much more that is out there. That is the message that I really want to sing in. So we can agitate for a little more. This is our country. We want our government to do well. We want our opposition to do well. I want to live in peace with my brothers and sisters so we can concentrate on the goal and the bauxite and the diamond and the timber. And of course, my oil that is leaving by the billions, by the billions of dollars. And we're getting so very little. We scramble in and asking everybody for some help. I, I, could you give me a $500,000 that we have billions of dollars that are standing out there and we say nothing about it? What does that make you? What should our government feel? What should the opposition feel? So those are the questions. Those are the answers. We come up to the weekend. Uh, I want you guys to be safe, protect yourself. You know, uh, this country is going on. We have three more, um, three more monsters uh, left for the year before 2020 is completed and what a year it has been we've lost so many we've dealt with the pandemic we've dealt with a, an elections that we're never ever going to forget they had so many twists and turns and we've seen some ugliness in our politicians that we should never allow anybody again to do that to us that's because we want people one nation, one destiny. And it should not be mere, a mere motto that we repeat because it sounds good. It should really mean a lot. One people, one nation, one destiny. Thank you, folks. It has been a pleasure as always being with you on this Wake Up Guyana show. You can also get us back again. If you want to see, uh, if you want to see a replay on this, Kaicho Radio on Facebook or Kaicho Radio live stream on um, YouTube. And we would have been coming to you on 99.1 in Demerara and Eskimo and 99.5 in Borby. It's a good day to all right across this beautiful land of ours. Thank you for boys down in the studio, Joshua and Kevin. And of course, to wherever you join us from, all the way from Ottawa, Canada, and the US, and wherever you're joining us from. If I missed anybody, I did do it deliberately. It's me being very tired and dehydrated. In the meantime, Thank you very much. God bless you until we meet again on Monday.
COVID-19 tips sponsored by Dead Soap. One, practice social distancing. Two, wear your mask when leaving the house. Three, wash your hands regularly for 20 seconds using our Dex Soap. Four, cover your nose and mouth with a disposable tissue or flex elbow when you cough or sneeze. Choose Dex Soap for that extra cleanliness. Dex Soap is affordable and available nationwide.